So activity left over from yesterday. Uh, so we're going to make some more feed before the rain that's supposed to set in the next few days. And uh, we're going to go over what I do or how I do it. Doesn't mean that it's uh, the way that everybody else will do it, but it is the way that I do it. So uh, let me walk over here and grab this uh, garden hose. And you see Porky laying in her taco shaped pool now, cooling off a little bit. Um, obviously this is on my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a little tiny bit of water in there. Uh, try to, if I can get this, might have to switch hands here to uh, to do this, to get my fingers to, there we go. Just put a little bit of water in the bottom, just so, try to help the sugar from not sticking in there. And then I take my pure peppermint extract and just put a few drops in the bottom and a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there and because I haven't made it up to Charlotte yet I got uh, some sugar had to buy sugar as you can see so we're gonna probably make up about I don't know 50 you know that's 10 pounds of sugar right there that I just put in that's 10 well a little bit under 10 because I went to the out yard and filled their feeder up that's why it was open there's one ow I just got stung underneath my arm for some ungodly reason ow that hurt And we're going to take another 10 pound bag here. If I can get it ripped open from Walmart. They didn't have many 25 pounders. So. Another. 20 pounds right there and can add some more water and give it a mix with my hand just to break up the clumps in the bottom make sure I'm getting it around the edge because I'm going to add a bunch of water. I mean, this is going to be super thin. Um, and for some unknown reason, the bees really love it. So a little bit of peppermint extract. And a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. This is 20 pounds of sugar. And, you know, a little bit less than five gallons because I don't want it to slosh out but we're gonna walk over to the uh, the feed tote over here and I might have to set y'all down for half a second well, maybe not there's a little bit of activity in here and bees I just got pine straw on the bottom guys so, so there you go that's pretty much a uh, one to one right now and uh we're gonna do that again so we're gonna have 10 gallons of one to one then we're gonna put 10 gallons of uh regular water in it so it's gonna be about half the one so again some uh peppermint extract just a little bit in there a couple dribbles and one sploosh of the apple cider vinegar and uh hands get sticky from getting in the bucket 
and I just rinse the remnants off the bottom, put a little bit of liquid in there. And then I got 10, uh, 20, 20 pounds of sugar that I'm going to put in this. So I'm essentially made one, um, one to one at the moment, but then I'm going to dilute it down to about half, half to one. I think that's what it ends up coming out to. So it's very thin. There's 10. And, and let's grab this other bit. We're going to dump another. 10 pounds of sugar in. So we got 20 pounds of sugar right now. A few drops of the uh, peppermint extract in there and some uh, uh, apple cider vinegar. The apple cider vinegar, I don't even know that it's necessary, but if it sits in the tote too long, it should help with uh, fermentation. Now, yesterday they did 20 gallons. Be right there. They drank, they drank 20 gallons of this stuff in uh, in just a couple hours. So we're gonna break up the clumps in the bottom with my hand, just stirring it up with my fingers, making sure there's no chunks. You know, you'll fill the granules or whatever in there. But we're gonna do this. And then I'm gonna put 10 gallons of water in the tote with it, dilute it down. All right, so we'll take this bucket over to the feeder. And then we're gonna see how long it takes for all these bees to get crazy, which shouldn't take that long. I mean, there are a few bees on here, so they'll be able to go signal the troops, right? Try to do this. Ugh. There you go. That's five more gallons. I'm gonna go. You know, there'll be sugar in the bottom still because it don't dissolve all the way. And we're going to add 10 gallons of water now. Just water. And uh, dilute it way But why are you diluting it, Bob? It's more like nectar. Uh, you know, a lot of people have concerns with feeding with the... Uh, uh, some supers on there. I'm mainly trying to get them to draw comb out and strengthen their brood box right now. So... This is uh, the method, and they really seem to like it. So, that works really well for me. And uh, I imagine we'll have, uh, you know, 100,000 bees or more on that in a little while. Um, it's pretty crazy. I might go a little bit short on the second bucket just because uh, normally I use 25 pound bags and today I'm only using 20 pound or 10 pound bags of sugar, but they only had uh, two 25 pound bags when I got there. So I bought them. It's, uh, it's going to, it's going to pick up real quick. All right. So we got 20 uh, or we got 10, we got 15 gallons right now. That's help mixing it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make 20 gallons. I don't think uh, in the grand scheme of things it, it'll make a difference. I actually have another 10 pounder bag over there. I might actually, nah, I'm not gonna add it. So yeah, I could do that. That'll make it 50, 50 pounds of sugar. 20 pounds of uh, water. Let's go ahead and add that extra bag. I got another 10 pounder right here. So we'll, uh, and then I got, I can make, do it again tomorrow if it's still with those. And, uh, you know, see how it goes. But really right now, this has uh, worked like a champ. And since I'm open feeding away from my colonies, it's cut down on the robbing. Um, all right, so that's just 10 pounds. The last 10 pounds, we're putting that in there. I'm not gonna add any more apple cider vinegar or anything to it. We're just gonna 
go ahead and juice this up. Make sure I got all that out of there because the pounds, 20 pounds. Um, each uh, initial one to one bucket that I made, I put some uh, drops of peppermint extract and uh, some apple cider vinegar in. And uh, this thing will be absolutely slamming. All right, a little bit more. It's starting to pick up right now, actually. Already. All right. So, well, it didn't clean all the all the sugar out, but uh, it's already starting to pick up. Let me just rinse the rest out of this bucket because I wasn't planning to put sugar in here when I first started. Rinse it out a little bit. Pour, pour that in there too and then this week I'm planning to go get the uh, two to one that I normally or that I'm going to start getting from Domino's and just a little bit extra to rinse the bucket and I'll set the bucket out here and let them clean it up and I'm sweating like mad um, right now but there was very little All right, there we go. That's clean, cleaner. Let's go ahead and set it out in case they want to get something else out of it. Um, there's some bees down in there that I got to climb out. So it's gonna pick up real quick. Let me just rinse my hands so I don't have sugar water all on. All on. We're waiting for the bees to pick up on it, and uh, you'll see. This has been a uh, Kind of a lifesaver right now for my bees. Let's see. Hold my phone one-handed. Garden hose pinched between my knees. Rinse this off. All right, great. Now, one more thing. You know it wouldn't be Bob's video if he didn't have a monster and a cigarette. And uh, I was planning to put the honey out today to sell. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so now, we got the monster and we got cigarette and uh, my thinking chair is all down for the new station from yesterday so just a recap of uh this special dearth syrup i made if you watched the very beginning there wasn't that many bees here it is definitely picking up um i got uh 50 pounds of sugar uh, probably 21 gallons of water um, just because I rinsed the bucket out um, I put some peppermint extract and a, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar in there and uh, they go they're going to work and it's gonna get real insane really quickly um, and it will I say under 20 minutes They'll be on this thing so hard that it's going to be insane. But, you know, all these bees will get filled up. They'll fly back, tell everybody, and it'll just multiply exponentially uh, real quick. But let me flip this around just so you can see the humidity today. Uh, yeah, I worked hard, guys. I, I flipped. Uh, oh, there's a girl on me. I, uh, I filled up uh, five-gallon pails with water. And mix some sugar in it and I got sweat dripping off my nose off off me <laughs> off of everything so um, you know what the news thing paid off a little bit I got um, I actually got called for a cutout and I went and looked at it this morning I got a cutout this week coming up and uh, it's a little bit of money not a lot but a little bit and because uh, it's not very hard to get to that we're going to do and uh you know if you guys haven't tried the open feed in the tote away from your colonies and you're in a little bit of a dearth you know if they've got a flow a nectar flow they're not going to touch it guys they're they're just going to leave and sit in the tote um but if you start to see some robbing happening in your in your colonies um this is what i would do 
I would take that tote and I would pull it out far away from uh, your colonies where they got to kind of go away from the colonies to get to it. And uh, about half to one, you know, half half pound of shirt. Well, I don't I assume that's what it is because the buckets that I'm making are one to one. Right. And then I'm doubling the water. So it should be half to one. And um, and they're killing it. They'll they'll will absolutely destroy it. Um, I'm going to smoke this cigarette and we're going to watch and see how it's going to ramp up as uh, as the bees find it. And I just saw one bee come back to this little five frame nuke I have over here. And I'm sure it's going to be doing the, the waggle in there and letting everybody know, hey, you need to come over here. But it will get so insane. I mean, we very little activity did I have flying around my apiary. And now they're going to be making a beeline back and forth from this trough to their colonies, putting it away and helping them, uh, helping them feed. Because they have nothing coming in. And, you know, I pulled the honey. Then it started to rain. Um, so and that was right after a heat a heat wave so they haven't had that much opportunity to store stuff up so hopefully they'll you know finish drawing out the brood boxes have food feed for their brood keep them stimulated keep them working give them something to do they won't be hanging out on the front of my colony you know and uh really give them give them some work you know put them back to work let them do something um it's gonna be i really uh did this on accident the first time because i didn't have that much feed and i i wanted to go around and put some feed on the colonies i'm like you know what i'll just open feed and i diluted it way down and it got um it got really busy busy over here with the uh with the thin down uh sugar water and uh they got i mean they enjoyed it i mean they liked it so if they liked it i love it and that's how we're gonna go with it and let them uh let them tell me hey we don't like that right if if they don't like it they won't eat it they won't go after it um if they've got nectar they won't go after it so it's not really a, an issue but right now, I'm just trying to get enough stuff. You know, I'm trying to take advantage a little bit of my strong colonies because I, I put, once I extracted the honey out, I put the comb back on. And uh, and now if they've got something to forage and store away, then I can take those off and feed them to my weaker colonies for the winter. Um, at least that's my idea. <laughs> we'll see. I've had lots of ideas. Not all of them have planned out, you know, worked out the way they planned, so... We'll see, but the uh, they definitely really like that mix. So again, I know there's some people coming in that it's um, I'll make a five gallon pail of one to one, right? So 25 gallon or 25 pounds of sugar, which is actually a little bit stronger than one to one, to uh, you know, to, and then fill up the pail with uh, water and mix it up. Uh, before I put that in, I put a little bit of water in the bottom, and I put some. Uh, sprinkles of uh, peppermint extract and about a cup full, not a cup, sorry, a cap full of apple cider vinegar with the mother. Then I put the sugar and then I mix it up, spraying the hose in there and put my hand down there, break the clumps up, whatnot, and uh, dump that in the big tote. Um, and I do that twice. So it's 50 pounds of sugar. And at that point, it's 50 pounds and 10 gallons of water. So that's already less than one to one, right? <laughs> It's something like that, a little bit less. And uh, then I add 10 more gallons of regular water in with it in the tote and put the pine straw on top. I already have pine straw, so when you start adding water, it'll just start floating on the top. And, uh, and you know, they, they've been going crazy over it. I mean, so I recommend you giving it a shot. It, it does two things. One, it, it's thinner, right? So they are actually working. But because it's thinner you're not using as much sugar and it's um it's actually saving you as a beekeeper money um now they've they've been going through it real quick um yesterday they went through that in a in a two to three hours they went through um 
10 gallon or 10 gallon 20 gallons 20 gallons of syrup so um i don't know if you can even classify it as syrup anymore it's just watered down sugar right sugar water real thin half to one 0.5 to one i guess if you want to get all uh technical about it and uh i haven't seen any comments so i don't know if anybody said anything let me see live chat nope nobody said anything yet but um i would give that a shot um if you're having especially you know down here it's 100 degrees out i've got a little bit of water source so they they when i say a little bit i mean a little bit i got like some kiddie pools out that i use for my animals they've got that um uh, when when porky dumps your water out and has a little mud pool they'll drink on that they get on my uh my uh wheelbarrow that's full of water they'll get on that but when i put this out with a little bit of sugar in it i mean they destroy it and i'm it, it is getting busier i can see the traffic starting to pick up between where my colonies are over there and where my feeder is over there um it's starting to get a little more i can see the bees flying back and forth between the two so we'll give it a few more minutes and then we're going to go over there and check and see how hyped the bees are getting about it um they i mean they seem to love it i mean to be honest with you i was surprised i guess it is thinner more like um natural nectar um but they are they're they'll blow it up i mean to uh it, it's crazy how how they get to it now i understand some people don't have that many colonies but you could still mix half to one or you know if you make a bucket of one to one split it in uh two then fill it the rest of the way up and then it's like half to one but uh it hadn't gotten crazy crazy like it did yesterday yet but it will they're just finding it and it'll be i mean they'll be getting it so fast that uh it, it's really i mean i'm amazed by it and i've been beekeeping for a while so and this is the first year i've done this half to one um at least this time of the year you know it's got a high moisture content so it allows them to uh to cool the colony and it's got you know some sugar in it so they're getting some carbohydrates out of it um and there's a lot of it so all the colonies can feast off of it and uh, even the smaller ones you know they don't have as many foragers but they can get out and get to it um, unmolested and uh, they're only taken back a little bit that they can guard back in the colony so i guess that helps out there too not worrying about robbing as much um so yeah it's uh it i think it's a good idea and a good thing uh, and at this point they seem to really uh enjoy it um you know, obviously, as it gets closer to fall, I'll start putting less water in it and less water, and it'll finally be one-to-one. -one. And, uh, you know, I don't typically feed liquid feed over the winter. I usually do sugar bricks, so we'll go to sugar bricks in the winter. And, uh, you know, hopefully this allows them, hey, DC, hopefully this allows them to uh, slam it away. And, uh, you know, they yeah, they got to work when they get back and yeah you made it to a live that's great <laughs> so i just made some uh, half to one um 50 pounds of sugar and uh basically 20 gallons of water which uh, 20 gallons is 160 pounds of water so i guess it's actually 0.3 um a little bit less than 0.3 not not half to one it's like 0.3 if you do it by weight so um just trying to give them a few minutes to find it to see if they're if they pick it up a little bit uh which i know they will it's just how long it takes them to uh oh did you watch the interview did you watch the link one because that was actually longer than the one they had on uh the show they're on the news is a little bit longer it's like almost two minutes on the one on the website and uh about I don't know, not even a minute on the, it didn't seem like on the one they actually did on the news. Um, is it picking up? Maybe they haven't made the first, I don't know how long it takes them to, to fill up and then go back. That's the, the real question. But, uh, 
We'll see. It is starting to pick up. It'll get 10 times, 20 times this busy. And I'm starting to see the great cloud of bees coming from that way. And I got a bee on my phone. Uh, and then the funny thing is they will land on these trees to clean off their little hands and and feet and then they'll fly back to the colony but they're uh yeah it's not near as busy as it was yesterday over here with this but it will get there it will definitely get get there and there'll be hundred thousand bees over here easy but they're just you know taking their time getting but you can't even see them in there i wish you could but they're i mean they're definitely going from their colonies and they're raising up and they're coming right over here uh ow, i just got head bumped by one didn't adjust this flight pattern we can i can pace it off let me see so one Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. That's about, um, I'm going to say 150 feet, just guessing. Probably 150 feet from the closest colony that way. Um, it's kind of sitting off in the shade, and it's not that far from these uh, little ones, which technically that should be an advantage to the little ones. They should be able to make more trips with less bees, so should help them out. It's probably 50 from these over here through the trees and bushes and all. So they're, uh, they will make it over here. They just gotta fly from here through there. And uh, yeah, this will get crazy as soon as they get that taste and take it back and they're like, oh, that's a little sweet. And uh, it's definitely gotta be the sugar in there um, because my other, um, my wheelbarrow doesn't have near the bees that this one has on it. But yep, it's starting to get more and more congested going through here on the flight plan. So we're gonna, it, I mean, this is nothing compared to yesterday. Once it's been here for an hour, this thing will be absolutely getting destroyed. So we got 20 gallons in a tote. Oh, the waffle board top, the yellow top. I'll have a cloud of bees here in a little while. I mean, it'll be, it was enough to where the newsman yesterday didn't want to come to it. So hopefully you guys are having a good beekeeping day. Um, I got a cutout to go do this week. A uh, guy said he saw me on the news, believe it or not. He said he saw me on the news and he realized I was close to him, so he called, and uh, I called him back this morning, and uh, I don't know, it's probably a five, he's probably gonna get paid 500 bucks for that. Hey, Sarah, and uh, 500 bucks to remove some bees out of somebody's, in between the first and second floors of an old house, and uh, I don't know how big the colony is, Right now, I did go out there this morning, and where they're setting is kind of a, um, they had a colony in there that got removed, and um, the person left that space open, so they didn't go in there, but they came back to that area and went to the next joist over. So I don't know how deep it goes, and if I'm gonna have to pull carpet up and go through the floor. Um, knowing me, that is my luck. That's what'll happen. Yeah, I hope you do uh, get better for sure. Yeah, newbies moved in 
right next door the joist right next door to the one that they uh, removed so I'll have to cut out uh, a piece of uh, board and uh, I should be able to access the colony from right there as long as they didn't move in like uh, you know six feet into the into the floor then I won't have to go cut out the floor um, otherwise we're gonna have to cut out the floor and lift it up to get the get the bees off and we'll you know we'll play it by ear I'll get my GoPro camera set up so we can see what we can see if it ends up getting on YouTube I don't know because uh, you know it has a habit of cutting off and whatnot and uh, and we'll have to check it out I don't know what Porky's doing back there just chilling walking around her pen um, but it's another hot one here today it says the uh, thermometer says like 96 but with the heat index it's over 100 triple digit heat index yeah if we're able to get it I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the cutout on it and uh, you know I could use the money so we're gonna try to Oh, yeah, that, that sucks. Um, my stepdaughter had it a few weeks ago, and um, she's just trying to get over it now. So, or I guess she was diagnosed a couple weeks ago, so she's just not over it. Oh, I hate a fever. I'm a wuss when it comes to being sick. I'll go straight to bed. <laughs> Turn on Netflix and chill in the bed. And, but now that the AC is fixed here, you can do that. You couldn't do it before. Uh, but you'll get it. You'll get it knocked out. And we'll have you back on the live when you feel better. And uh, this, uh, so I, I recommend trying this feed if you can. Uh, we'll go check check the box out or the toad out here in a second and see if it's picked up any. But I imagine it will. Usually as the foragers come back and they're told, hey, there's closer so to come get this. So, I usually don't put it out, uh, I don't put my liquid feed out early. I really need to put out some pollen sub to see if they'll get on it, but I don't want to waste the pollen sub either, because a lot of times when you put out the dry pollen sub here, they just, um, they, it ends up just getting sun bleached. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's pick up over there. I can see the rate the rate of travel that they're going back and forth. I got bees coming both directions now. <laughs> back and forth over there. And then the dragonflies come out and try to pick the bees off out of the sky. So let's see. Oh, nice breeze. So we'll give them a few more seconds and a minute or so, and then we'll go back over there and check it out. But it gets so, they start moving so quick over there. I felt like uh, Ian Stepler the other day when there was, they were coming back and forth so, so fast. It doesn't look like rain, but they're calling for it. So maybe clouds are going to move in later. Oh, let's see. Looks like I got a bunch of bees. But still not uh nah, still not like it was yesterday. It'll take it a while. But it is picking up still. Def definitely starting to pick pick up. And they're down, down in that corner, walking right on it because there's sticks right under the water. And they'll go down in the pine straw and get it. And then they'll, I got two bees on my phone, one on my hand holding the phone. And they just come in like crazy. And it'll get much more busy. Nope, away from the eyes, girl. 
and uh, and there's a cloud of bees moving back and forth. Let's see what it looks like over at the colonies because they will start moving really feverishly to uh, to go get it. Especially some of these bigger ones will start when they get the notification it's time. What do they got going on over here? Just bees linking together. And uh, this one's really starting to pick up going in and out. It'll get busier and busier and busier. And uh, they will they will grab it. I got bees flying today for sure. I wonder if uh, if I grab some pollen sub if they will take that. I doubt it. It's usually the pollen guys go out early in the morning. It seems like I could probably sprinkle some on their entrances. That might work. That might could work. Let me grab my bag of pollen sub and drop a little bit. All right, ducks, out of the way. All right. Let me grab this bag. See what we can get. Oh, I got stuff on it. On it. That would be uh, too easy if I didn't have stuff on top of it. And there we go. All right. Note to self, don't stack stuff on top of your pollen sub. All right, pollen substitute. Oh, you're only a big, heavy 40-pound bag, 50-pound bag. Hold on, guys. Oh! Sorry. We're going to hopefully not dump over this $100 bag of sub. And go. Let's see what we got out here. Uh, at least it's a big strong bag and I'm gonna put some out for them see if it helps god almighty these things are heavy I should have just bought a bucket you know what I got a better idea well at least it looks good on paper I'm gonna take a five gallon lid and let me turn this around since I know I'm gonna get powder for the you know, and uh, again so we got a little bit of sub and we're gonna try to uh, see if they'll uh, take any of it I'm actually just gonna sprinkle some right on their their colonies right in front of the door and try not to get stung in the process see if they get to it I don't usually do it this way but sometimes Sometimes we do it this way. Just putting a little sprinkle on. Can even dust a few bees.
and we'll flip some around here. Then we'll take set it out here in the shade. So now we got some out here. Yep, DoorDash for the bees. We'll see if they they usually will kick it off, but sometimes they will start getting it. Let's see. So they are landing on it, like right here, and taste testing it, I guess. I don't know what they're doing. See if they'll, uh, Oh man, sorry to hear that, Larry Moore. Well, they are hitting that a little bit. Look at that, that's crazy. Look at this, guys. I had a frame laying up on the uh, colony right there. Can you even see that? I don't even know. That was just laying on there. I better put them back. They don't like that too much. They're just cooling off. And uh, see if they're even touching the pollen sub. They're kind of messing with it. I mean, they're walking on it. So I don't know if they walk on it and then uh, are like packing it or if they're just knocking it on the ground right there. And nothing on the, the bulk over here. I usually put it in that tube, but I got it right there right now. It's a handful. But it looks like they're kind of dropping it off. All right, let's see the the tote and then we'll wrap this up <laughs> since we've been going a long time and I can't see the uh, stuff right now they're getting it hey James Yeah, I do. I got sweat in my eyes for sure today. Uh, but yeah, that's what we got going on. Just a little feed action, some uh, pollen sub, and uh, we'll see if they take the dry pollen. But it is, guys, thanks for watching. This went way longer than I wanted to. Um, if you didn't catch the beginning on how I make the uh, the syrup. You can go back after I'm done and watch the beginning. And uh, it's real simple. So just uh, give it a shot. See how your bees like it. And let me know in the comments. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good day.